Yellow ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to do some redstone logic to make combination locks and lotteries. So let's get to it. As always, before we get into it, there will be a world download down in the video description where you can download this world and look at these contraptions for yourself, grab your schematics, look through them, make changes in creative, whatever you want to do there. But we're going to have two separate sections here. So we're going to have a combination lock. Here is a full build using it. And here is just the redstone and then a slot machine. So again, here is the build there. And then here is just the redstone. But first, let's talk about what we're doing here. So we talked about this a little bit with the potion factory, but what are logic gates? There's some real basic examples of logic gates. And basically what it is, is you are taking in player input uh, or it's some kind of other input. It doesn't have to be player input, but standardly we show this as player input with these levers. So a player flicks a lever and then we decide we only want an output. So in this case, turning on these lamps under certain scenarios. So this right here is your real super basic and gate, meaning that both of these levers need to be turned on. So this one and this one in order for that lamp to turn on. No matter what order we turn those off in, and we can see all that's doing is these levers are turning off these torches, and only when both of the torches are off does this redstone turn off. This uh, torch then becomes enabled, and then it lights the lamp. Or gates probably one of the easiest ones. We just you know want to turn on if either of these is enabled, and then we have this one here where this lever won't do anything until this is turned on, and now we can turn that on and off, on and off. And so basically this is a master switch and this is a slave switch. Now there are tons of different types of logic gates and logic systems that you can do with redstone. There are people that do actual computer systems, people that make uh, touch screens with games and all that kind of thing using these principles. There are obviously a lot more complex versions of gates like this and a lot of different types of gates. But in this case, what we're going to talk about is a, you know, like a type of combination here. We want to have a certain combination of things in order for our output to happen that we want. And in these cases, what we want is when we have the right combination, we want to enable this button to be able to open the door. So only when the correct combination is input is this button enabled. Or in this slot machine setup where only when you have the three diamonds in a row, are you going to get the jingle, the flashing lights and the prize diamond. Back to our simplified gates here. This is just a really simple style of combination lock. This would be you want certain levers to be flicked and other ones to not be flicked. So in this case, you know, we don't get a lamp output right there, regardless of what we're doing on these, if we don't have the right combination. And what we're doing is each of these torches is getting turned off and on. But then if we have a signal going into here, then it's still lighting that dust itself. So in order to get the lamp to turn on, we need this one off, this one on, this one off, this one on, and this one on. Then we get our output. We're going to be doing that using piston feed tapes to have a block inside of a feed tape represent a signal output. Now, for those of you who don't know what a piston feed tape is, is it's basically a, a circle of blocks. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be, you know, it can end up snaking around to a bunch of shapes, but it's basically blocks that are getting pushed around by pistons in a repeating pattern. If I come over here and I hit this observer and send some signal through, this is a really simple piston feed tape, but we can see that those pistons are just pushing those blocks around and around and around. And they'll just go on forever like that. In this really simplified design, there's no off switch, so we just have to break a redstone to get it to stop. But basically that's what we're doing. In this case, we don't want to show the user the redstone. We want to show them a visual representation. And so what we're using is we are using a composter with a fill level um, to go around this piston feed tape. And when it lands in front of this comparator, that's when we get our signal output. And then what we're doing is whenever we activate this system, so I'll push this button, we are sending around both feed tapes at the same time. And that's how we're using that to represent. So in this case, these feed tapes are just mirrored. So here, the purple block, corresponds to the composter. And all we're doing is this is just feed tapes that are mirrored and we just have the blocks inside the feed tape switched. You know, so we have the glass and the composter, then here we have the colored wool. So in this case, we can see next that's gonna be up is gonna be the lime. And so then the lime is gonna correspond to the composter and correspond to our signal. And there we go. Now we got our signal when it's lime. When it goes to another color, it switches off. 
Right next to it here, we have a system where we've just filled up composters of different fill levels. This is a texture pack from Vanilla Tweaks to show the fill level of composters. But we can see the different fill levels in these little progress bars here. And then we also have just one glass. So we can go from signal strength uh, zero to six and then eight. We can't do seven because as soon as you fill up a composter to seven, it stays at seven for a second and then it switches to eight. But then we just have a comparator out the back reading the signal and you could hook this up to a red coder or something like that and use this and it's just going to do the same way. It's just going to cycle through these different signal strengths. So now we have zero. So we can see when I press that button, you know, here we start at level six and then we go down to level five. Next level is four. So we can then assign uh, manually in our heads values to these colors here. So we could tell players, you know, uh, red represents signal strength three, or maybe you don't want to tell other players again, maybe it's combination lock. And then in these setups with both the combo lock and the slot machine, we have just multiples of these set up. And then we add our logic gates after the comparator here. So in the slot machine, you know, we want it to be all of these are on, then we send one because we just have them on where the diamond blocks are. And then in this system, you can see even though all the wool is lined up the same way, we have just the composters in a different layout. So let's go over each of these individually then. Let's start out with the combination lock here. In this setup here, the just the redstone version, we can see that all the wool is in a different orientation, but all the composters are lined up. So this that we see on the front is our assigned combination code. So yellow, red, blue, white, orange, lime, and then that enables this button right here. If I hit one of these note blocks, what we're going to see is that feed tape is going to kick off and then this torch turns on because it's no longer getting a signal from a composter. So if any of these torches are on, so this is an OR gate, then we enable this redstone line and we disable this repeater by locking it. So now pushing the button does nothing. And we can see if I take this kind of more out of sync, we just have more torches turned on back here. But as we know, if any of these torches get lit up, then it's gonna end up locking that repeater right there. Now, and we'll get to this in the slot machine, but when we get the three diamonds, we wanna have you know a lot of visualization of the user. We have the flashing lights, we have the note block tunes, we have the diamond coming up. In a combination lock, you don't wanna let the user know that they've guessed the correct combination. Sure, they could run over there and hit the button and test, but if they have to do this each time, you know, change one, run over here, change one, run over here, change one, run over here, they're gonna get bored much quicker than if you just give them a, a sound and they could just run around hitting blocks and maybe accidentally get it. They hear the sound and know, oh, I've got it, now I can get in. So that's why I've opted to do this without you know, locking specific pistons. Once we know we get the correct combination and the door's gonna open anyways, it's fine to make some sounds with some pistons or something like that. But here we have just repeaters, torches, dust, and all that. The only thing making noise is gonna be the feed tape itself, which once again, once the user hits one of these note blocks, it's fine that they know it's gonna switch because they're gonna see the colors switching anyways. The sound doesn't matter there. And then once we put in the correct combination, once again, line turns off, we can now enable this button. For this combination lock, you can make this even wider. So these are just tiled with just a block of area in between. I didn't worry about making these one wide tileable. But what I've done here is I've also included a way, you know, normally with a combination lock, uh, you have a little button that you push in and then you can change the code and then you um, undepushed, un unpressed state, undepushed stated that button and then you can um, have a new combination on there. So I've included that, this lever right here, we're gonna see when I flick this is going to push in some pistons on the glass feed tape here. So that's gonna stay in place because you can't push a uh, extended piston head. And then we can change the colors that it's gonna display here without affecting the back feed tape. I'm gonna hit this one right here. We can see, there we go. So that one moves, this one doesn't. So now let's say I want to change my combination lock. Maybe, you know, one of my friends was on the server and he said, hey man, can I just get in your base? I really need some slime. And you're like, yeah, the combination is yellow, red, blue, white, orange, lime. And he goes in there and then you come back and you're like, yeah, I'm going to change my password just in case he wrote that down, you know, because they can't just like mine through the wall and get to your base. That's illegal, right? So once again, that feed tape has moved. These have not. Now I'm just going to unflick this lever that's going to retract those pistons, put everything back in place. So now we can see right here, the purple is there. Button is enabled. Now it switches off to the purple, so now that's lime. And then we hit the button, and it's not going to do anything. So all that does is it locks one of the piston feed tapes in place, and then it allows the other one to move freely, so that way we're changing which block this composter associates to. And here you can see the combination for this lock, purple, red, blue, white, orange, lime. 
And then when you press the button, it's just a series of flying machines that are going to go up and down and open up that door. So that's how we're using the system inside this combination lock. Now let's move on to the slot machine. Before we get too far into it, I do want to thank uh, MoCraft for the ideas and the deco here. She built us a little casino around it with this nice little kind of woven wood floor look. Um, this is a really cool roulette table looking thing. And then the poker table over here. Uh, MoCraft, thanks so much for the deco here. Uh, as you know, if you are a watcher of this channel, deco is my specialty as long as it's out of yellow concrete. So what we have here is we have uh, similar types, not the exact same, but similar types of piston feed tapes. When we push this button after there's been a diamond input, then we want to have it randomly pick an order of which way to go. If it wasn't random, then users would just be able to exactly know when they should start playing the game if they just memorized the sequence of the blocks. So once I put a diamond inside this chest, we then have a filter underneath the chest that then filters out only diamonds. And whenever there are diamonds available, that pushes this note block here and means that you can push the button and activate the system. And when we push the button, you can see that that first one stopped first, then the middle one, and then the far right one. Um, that's at least as far as I know, usually how a slot machine works. I'm not a slot machine expert, but that's what we're going based off of. So down here, once you push that button, it activates these three droppers. Each of the dropper has uh, shulker boxes that are filled with random amounts of items. If you didn't want to, you know, have to deal with all this cobble and you want to actually do this, you could do uh, any kind of randomizer you want here. But um, you could also just switch over to using uh, unstackable items like wooden shovels inside of here, and it'll still work the same. But then each of these three systems, so they are they're, have the ability to pick the same range of random numbers. And if you're doing this in programming, it's like, you know, you get a random number and then on the first attempt, you just take that random number. On the second one, you multiply it by, let's say, two. And then on the third one, you multiply it by maybe three. That's kind of what we're doing here. We have this pulse extender right here. So after that sugar box spits out, it reads a signal. And then that signal strength goes into here and goes to this pulse extender. And then that will deactivate once it runs out. But over here, you can see we have a block here instead of the redstone dust. So this one is going to run out twice as fast as this one because this one only loses signal strength on this side, whereas this one loses it on both sides. And then this one here, all we've done is just added in another couple of comparators there to make this one last even longer. So they all have the ability to pick the same. So it's possible that you can have this one and this one stop at the same time if this one gets a uh, high roll and this one gets a low roll. But generally speaking, that's how it's going to rant. But in this case, we're doing the logic on the reverse. So we only want to get a signal output to our little note block jingle here, to our flashing lights, if all three of these are in the on state. So it's a, I, I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but it's a three-way AND gate, a thrand, thrand gate, gate AND three, let's call it that, sure. Whatever, let's move on. So we can see when that is off, when there is no composter there, that actually then pulls out the block so it can't power the repeater. So when we do get to one of these blocks that represents a diamond, that block gets pushed out. But because there's no signal coming in from this side, that doesn't actually turn on anything here. So it's only when all three of them line up that we can send the signal through. Boom. And we get our output. Now, I did provide Mo with a little bit older version of the redstone. So in the decode version here, which looks amazing, by the way, um, there is no diamond input chest. It just spits out the one diamond if you win. Um, but, you know, you can grab the redstone from over here and then you can still build this kind of deco around it. And I will say, even with having two sets of diamonds in there and two sets of composters, that means, you know, you're doubling the chance of this the chances are still really low because you have to hit all three of them in that same configuration. So if you want to make it a, you know, a more player friendly game, you know, you got some friends at a server just having some fun, you know, you can increase the number of diamonds that appear in this tape. I've just chosen random Minecraft blocks here. You could also do the wool blocks or pick your own theme of blocks here that would appear inside of this. Now, one other thing to note before I go, there is a slight change of what you're going to see in the world download. You're going to see it like this reason I've done this is just to add on some spam protection because we had a situation where, you know, if a user, especially if they turn on fast click, then it will start spamming it. It was going to actually break those, but now we've got that set so that it's not actually going to break. 
So that's going to be it. Once again, check the video description for that world download so you can grab these things and look at the redstone more in depth yourself. Grab your schematic and build it for yourself. I'd love to know um, what you end up using these for, especially like if you do the combination lock on a door. I'd love to see um, how people can actually implement these things into their builds. It's really fun seeing that. There's been a lot of that happening lately, especially in the Discord, which I do link down in the video description as well. Um, so that's been a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.